from poisonous snakes to man-eating crocodiles. Australia is infamous for its dangerous wildlife. With more deadly snakes than any other country worldwide, it isn't surprising that you might even think that every deadly creature is ready and waiting to pounce on you. It's true that Australia is notorious for being a menagerie of deadly creatures. The box jellyfish, the blue ringed octopus and the inland taipan are in the top 10 most venomous animals of the world and all live in Australia. And you might be right to be concerned. The fierce snake or inland taipan is generally regarded as the world's most venomous snake. One drop of its potent venom is enough to kill 100 adults in about 30 minutes. A large sting from the highly venomous box jellyfish can induce cardiac arrest and kill within a few minutes. Then there's the blue ringed octopus. It looks harmless and is small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. But it's more toxic than many land animals. Its venom could kill 20 adults in just a few minutes. Though sharks, spiders and snakes get the majority of bad press, it's actually the awesome array of predators and venomous creatures that have earned Australia its fearsome reputation. Join me as we learn more about these deadly creatures in Australia and discover what is the unexpected and most dangerous encounter of all. And it's relevant to each and every one of us. Over 130,000 people around the world die from snake bites every year. This astonishing fact shocks us and generates a huge fear of snakes. Now, what's surprising is that 20 of the 25 most venomous snake species live in Australia. And with approximately 170 snake species sliding and slithering throughout this great southern land, of which 100 are likely to be venomous, it's easy to see why people are afraid. The most venomous snake in the world, an epic predator of the Australian outback, the inland taipan, is otherwise known as the fierce snake. And the thought of stepping on one of these snakes while walking in the bush almost paralyzes people with fear. Just one bite from an inland taipan snake has enough venom to kill 100 adult people. By volume, it's the most venomous snake in the world to humans. But to look at this snake, you would think it was harmless. It's a slender snake about two meters long with a shiny brown coat of smooth scales and a creamy belly. It's found in the northeast and the inland of Australia and is respected because its venom can kill a person in such a short period of time. But the good news is that they are rarely encountered and there are no recorded deaths from the fear snake. Another Australian snake that is included in the top 10 venomous snakes of the world is the common death adder. It is notorious for having the longest fangs and the fastest strike of any snake in the world. Its potent toxin can cause paralysis or even death within six hours of the bite. Now, the death adder is around one meter long with a thick brown body covered in red and black bands and a creamy underside, making it the master of camouflage in the loose leaf litter and debris where it lives. Surprisingly, the death adder is mostly found in Sydney bushland and the grasslands of the eastern coast of Australia, though most residents of these areas would never see one and certainly don't want to see one. Over the past 150 years, only 14 people have died from a death at a snake bite. And the last one recorded was in 1975. Now, another very dangerous snake in Australia is the Eastern Brown Snake. 
It's included in the top 10 deadliest snakes on earth. And it's responsible for the most fatalities of any Australian snake. The venom causes paralysis and uncontrollable bleeding. This snake is a thin brown snake with a pale yellow belly. It grows up to two meters in length and lives in the open grass and woodlands of Eastern Australia, where most of the Australian population lives. The National Coronial Information Service reports that between the year 2000 and 2016, the brown snake was responsible for 23 of the 35 deaths from snake bite in Australia. Now let's look at another of the world's most venomous snakes, the mainland tiger snake. So if you think you are safe in the cooler climes of Australia, think again. This species is potentially fatal to humans and lives in southern Australia, including Tasmania. It grows to about 1.2 metres in length and has banded patterns over its body. These tiger snakes have been responsible for three known deaths in Australia since the year 2000. While it's natural to be frightened of snakes, the reality is the number of deaths from snake bites in Australia is very small. Approximately 550 people in Australia are admitted to hospitals with snake bites each year. But there is only an average of two deaths per annum. Now, to put that in perspective, the World Health Organization estimates that at least 130,000 people die from snake bite globally each year. And only two of that 130,000 are from Australia. Another land creature that causes a lot of anxiety is the spider. Many deadly species of spiders live in Australia, but it is the Sydney funnelweb spider that's renowned as the world's deadliest spider. It is famous for being aggressive and has fangs that can even pierce toenails. And its venom can kill an adult in less than an hour. Now, what is really unbelievable is that the Sydney funnelweb spider is found in the bushland and beneath logs and bricks in the backyards of the Sydney metropolitan area. It is the male funnelweb spider that has the toxic bite and has been responsible for 13 known deaths in Australia. So beware when gardening in the Sydney area. And if you thought that you might be safer in or near the water in Australia, think again. The animal that is considered to be the most dangerous animal in Australia and the most likely one to kill a human is the saltwater or estuarine crocodile. It's an aggressive and territorial animal and is the largest reptile in the world in terms of their mass. They are known to reach over five to seven metres long with heavily armoured dark green skin and weighing up to a thousand kilograms. So if you're anywhere near a river or estuary near the ocean in Northern Australia, then beware. There are warning signs at river crossings and estuaries to alert you to be careful as you're in the crocodile's habitat in their territory. And if by chance you are attacked by one of these monsters, try to escape the water and run. And hopefully you are faster on land than the crocodile is. So is it safer to swim in the beautiful blue waters around Australia? Well, yes and no. Records show that the great white is the most dangerous shark in Australia, with a recorded 314 unprovoked attacks on humans. In 2020, Australia was the deadliest location for shark attacks in the world, with eight fatalities. To keep swimmers safe, many beaches have shark nets to deter sharks. However, to reduce your risk of shark attack, it's always smart to avoid swimming alone at dusk, in river mouths, and a long way offshore. The safest place to swim 
is always between the red and yellow flags of the lifeguards. But the greatest risk to swimmers at Australian beaches is not actually the sharks, but is in fact the dangerous strong underwater currents called rips, which can drag swimmers out to sea. These rips are one of the greatest and most common hazards on Australian beaches. On average, rip currents are responsible for at least 21 drowning deaths in Australia each year. Thousands of people flock to the white sandy beaches every day in Australia. So how can swimming in Australia not be safe? Well, at certain times of the year, it is even totally prohibited to swim in the tropical waters because of deadly marine species. One of these marine animals is the small mollusk, the blue-ringed octopus, found in rock pools and on coral reefs. It's a pretty little animal that is only five to 20 centimeters long, but it can be lethal to humans. Its venom, which is strong enough to kill 20 humans, is contained in the salivary glands and is passed on when the octopus bites you. Unfortunately, there is no antidote. So when you see the warning sign, blue ringed octopus, stay away from the water. The next deadly marine animal on the coast of Australia looks innocuous enough, but their stings can prove fatal. The small Irukandji jellyfish has an almost transparent bell that is less than three centimeters across and has four tentacles up to one meter long. It is the smallest and one of the deadliest box jellyfish in the world. Amazingly, it is even able to fire its stingers into its victim. But this little jellyfish is nothing compared to its cousin, the box jellyfish. It's one of the most venomous marine creatures known that actually hunts its prey and can kill a healthy adult in minutes. Now, the box jellyfish is shaped like a box, about 20 centimeters long, and has tentacles that reach about three meters. Most box jellyfish have 15 tentacles in each of the four corners, and each tentacle has about half a million venom injectors. In other words, a single box jellyfish has about 30 million venomous stingers. Venom is delivered by millions of tiny harpoon-like stinging cells on up to 60 tentacles. And an encounter is said to be excruciating and to cause cardiac arrest. This jellyfish is found in Northern Australian waters during the warm summer months. There are signs on the beaches to warn swimmers of the box jellyfish. Since records have been kept, more than 66 deaths from the box jellyfish are listed. Yes, Australia appears to be an extremely scary place. How can you possibly expect to survive? Well, as it turns out, even though Australia is home to a wide variety of dangerous wildlife, it's not what it seems. Australia has got snakes, spiders, sharks, crocodiles, killer jellyfish, and a whole host of other venomous creatures. But look on the bright side. At least we don't have lions, tigers, elephants, grizzly bears, or hippopotamus wandering around in the bush too. Now, this is another surprising statistic. Around 400 tourists to Australia encounter a fatal catastrophe during their visit to the land down under each year. That's more than one a day. But although Australia is famed for having some of the most dangerous animals in the world, statistically speaking, you're unlikely to be killed by an animal here in Australia. You're much more likely to become a statistic in a road accident or swimming at one of our beautiful beaches than you are to be attacked by a wild animal. In fact, if you're really worried about dangerous animals in Australia, your best bet is to give horse riding a miss. Horses and cows kill the most humans every year of any animals. In fact, in Australia, horses and cows have killed 77 people between 2008 and 2017. 
That's far more people than any other animal. And what is even more surprising is that the much-loved icon of Australia, the kangaroo, that is not even considered a danger to anyone, has been responsible for 60 deaths by road accidents in the past nine years. That's more than any of the 10 most deadly and dangerous animals in Australia. So, although Australia has got the world's most venomous species of land snake, snakes are well down the list of causing deaths. Snake deaths in Australia average out at less than two per year. Nobody in Australia has died from a spider bite since 1979, after the successful introduction of anti-venom for all native species. The crocodile population is on the rise, following the ban on crocodile hunting. So, since 1985, there have been 34 attacks and 11 fatalities. The blue-ringed octopus has caused three deaths in the last century. But the real killer is the box jellyfish. It has caused 66 deaths since records began in 1883. That's about one death every two years. So sometimes the least expected animal is the most deadly, the one we don't see, or the one that doesn't have the aggressive reputation. Let's also look at these surprising figures from the National Coronial Information System, the NCIS, that records unexpected deaths in Australia. It shows that on the average, 248 people die from drowning every year and 1,195 lose their lives in road accident deaths during the same period. These numbers are far higher than any attack by a deadly animal. So sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference between what is deadly and dangerous and what isn't. And as we have seen, it isn't always a wild animal that causes a fatality. Now, as deadly as these 10 animals are, there is a far more deadly force that we all encounter every day in our lives. I'm sure you've been watching and reading the news lately. The images are startling, aren't they? People attacked, fatal car accidents, riots, deadly viruses, brawls, terrorist attacks, family tragedies. It's a constant reminder that we are living in a sad and violent world. And after every news release, we might sometimes ask the question, why is this happening? Who is responsible? What is the source of all these terrible events and deaths? And more importantly, how will it all end? So how did evil, violence and destruction begin in our world? Well, surprisingly, it all began in heaven. <laughs> yes, in heaven. All the evil, hate, anger and bloodshed that we see in our world today had its origin in heaven. Here's what happened. God created the angels and the leader of these angels in heaven was named Lucifer. He was beautiful and charismatic, but his heart was filled with pride. He wasn't happy just being the leading angel. He wanted to be God. He desired to take the place of God. And when that didn't happen, he rebelled against God. Lucifer gathered his followers around him. A third of all the angels joined his ranks and rebelled against God. This amazing angel, Lucifer, and his followers fought against God. But Lucifer and his angels lost the battle and were thrown out of heaven. Let's read what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verses seven to eight. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. Now, the question is, where did they go and what are they doing? Well, all the evil, conflict and strife around us tells us where Lucifer and his angels ended up. Yes, on earth, our earth, right here where we live. 
but there were consequences for his rebellion in heaven. Lucifer didn't get away with his disobedience and rebellion. He is no longer Lucifer, the first angel. His name is now the devil, the enemy of God. Now, the Greek word for devil is diabolos, which means to split. And that is exactly what the devil is, a splitter, a divider, a wedge driver. He divided Adam and Eve from God in the Garden of Eden. Instead of a daily walk with God, Adam and Eve felt ashamed of what they had done. They tried to hide from God. And Satan has every intent of doing the same to you. He rebelled against God and wants you and me to do the same. He wants us to think God doesn't care for us. He wants us to think God is a tyrant. He wants us to think God is behind all the catastrophes and evil in the world. The Bible tells us what Satan is now doing. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, we read, The devil, your enemy, goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. Satan is on the prowl. He has many strategies and tricks to destroy us. He's cunning. He's subtle. He's smart. He is far smarter than we are. Satan is trying to create chaos, distractions and destruction in our relationships and everywhere in the world. In every quarrel, riot, war and violent act, an unseen spiritual war is going on behind the scenes. Satan is the mastermind of destruction and one of his favourite tricks is to create the toxic feelings of unworthiness that overwhelm us. We feel unworthy, we feel alone, we feel isolated. We constantly compare ourselves to others and we come up wanting. We are plagued by self-doubt and feel defeated by events in our lives. We feel inferior to our friends, workmates and family. We find ourselves constantly replaying our regrets in life. They cause such negative feelings and we find solace in places and activities that are even more damaging to us. These feelings of unworthiness and inadequacy are Satan's simplest tricks to get us to feel that God doesn't really care about us. Satan wants us to follow his lead and rebel against God, to blame God for what is happening and to reject God's love and His plan for our lives. This is a war for allegiance and control of the minds of every man, woman and child on planet Earth. And creating low self-esteem is one of the most effective tactics that Satan uses to tear us down. His greatest desire is to damage and destroy our lives. And he uses many nefarious ways to make us feel inadequate, unworthy, undervalued and separated from God's love. He wants to steal your peace, kill your dreams, to destroy your future. So Satan is no laughing matter. He hates you. He wants to destroy you, your marriage, your family, career, finances and life. You won't have peace in your life if you think you're just fighting or contending with another person when conflict arises. You are fighting against Satan, against powerful spiritual forces, the forces of darkness. He's behind the scenes, taking every opportunity to produce conflict in our lives. Satan incites, persuades, binds and rules. And you'll never defeat or outsmart Satan by yourself. So how do you fight against this kind of power? How do you defend yourself? How do you get the victory? Well, there is only one way to escape the clutches of Satan. Even though you were born into a cosmic battle between good and evil, you are born to win because Jesus loves you and has become your defence. He's already defeated the devil at the cross of Calvary. He's acted on your behalf. 
And by accepting Him, His victory becomes your victory. God wants us to feel loved. He wants us to be successful. God wants us to have strong personal relationships. He wants us to feel worthy. He wants us to feel special. So one of the best ways to counteract Satan's attack on you and to overcome is to read the Bible and start believing what God says about you and His plan for your life. Do you know what God thinks about you? Well, here it is. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And here's the really good news. Jesus is returning soon to this earth to end all the suffering and pain and to destroy sin and Satan forever. And Jesus is going to take us to live with Him forever, forever in a perfect environment where there will be no more deadly animals, no more pain, no more suffering and no more death. If you would like to know more about Jesus and how to have a relationship with Him, if you would like to experience lasting peace and happiness in your life, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our Incredible Journey viewers today. It's a small but popular book, Steps to Christ. This booklet is our gift to you and is absolutely free. I guarantee there are no costs or obligations whatsoever. So make the most of this wonderful opportunity to receive the free offer we have for you today. Phone or text 0436 333 55 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand or visit our website tij.tv or simply scan the QR code on your screen and we'll send you today's free offer totally free of charge and with no obligation. Write to us at GPO Box 274, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001, Australia or PO Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241, New Zealand. Don't delay. Call or text us now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have a God in heaven who loves us. We pray that you'll protect us from the deadliest dangers of this world and also from the attacks and deceptions of Satan. Father, please keep us and our families safe and grant us a place in your kingdom where there will be no more pain, suffering or death. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 